Croatia's island of vitality, Lošini is a magnet for tourists and a hotspot for Adriatic wildlife. But like many coastal areas, these crystal clear waters are plagued by marine litter. Each year, 8 million tonnes of plastic enter the oceans around the world. The pollution is harming the biodiversity, spreading disease and toxins throughout the food chain. These local scuba diving students have volunteered to clean up some of the trash accumulated over the years in an otherwise picturesque marina. We dive together to find the seafloor littered with trash, from bottles and plastic cups to pieces of broken boats. You see on the bottom a lot of human waste, mostly plastic, nylons, everything that sometimes it's on the beach, then when the wind starts to blow, then can finish in the sea, and there is a big question who will clean that up. We find old fishing nets and cages piling up on the seafloor, a not particularly surprising discovery. It's estimated that one-fifth of all fishing gear in European waters ends up lost or intentionally abandoned. They can take centuries to degrade and make up a quarter of all marine litter in Europe. Finding these abandoned nets at sea and lifting them to the surface is not easy. This hazard for marine wildlife is known as ghost fishing. They are like a trap for many marine organisms. They get completely entangled and this particular type of the net is also made of nylon, which is also then plastics that will in the end turn into the microplastics and this is how we will end up with having particles of microplastics in our body. Finding ghost nets and other marine litter can be easier with new technology. Researchers from the European project MargeNet work here in Croatia and in Italy, testing a high-resolution underwater scanning system. It's essentially a sonar, but it's located not on the boat at the surface, but directly on the sea floor. The boat can move, drift with the wind, whereas this instrument is steadily fixed at the bottom. Its head rotates 360 degrees, providing us with the seabed map at a centimetre precision. We can see objects as small as this. The plan is to use this technology to map pollution hotspots, which can then be cleaned up by professional diving teams. This can make underwater cleaning operations more efficient and less costly. As the echo sounder is deployed from the boat, one of the researchers makes a dive to check that the device is properly placed on the sea floor. This acoustic scanner is capable of detecting underwater objects within a radius of 150 meters, transmitting the results back to the boat in real time. On the screen, you can see the round shape of a tire or the elongated shape of a rope. This system can be used in combination with other methods to identify objects on the bottom, in particular if the water isn't clear. In this part of Croatia, the Adriatic Sea is extremely clear, but the same technology can be just as effective in murky waters like the Venetian Lagoon in Italy. High tides often wash litter off the streets in Venice and straight into its famous canals. But local authorities and activists are now fighting this problem. Here in Venice and in other coastal cities around the world, cleanup events have become an annual tradition. This volunteer action is supported by local and international organizations. Last year, the European Union, in partnership with the UN, mobilized over 40,000 volunteers in nearly 80 countries to take part in the EU beach cleanup campaign. Plastic Free Venice Lagoon is one of the numerous local groups that participated in this year's cleanup. Some volunteers removed floating debris from the historic canals, while others picked up rubbish that had been brought ashore by the wind and currents. 
Taking a boat to Murano Island, renowned for its glassmaking, we find a less visited part of it littered with garbage. Besides cleaning up, the activists work all year round on raising public awareness. I think one of the most important things is to get people closer to the problem of marine litter, of how we treat our environment, and try to create a bond that's been somehow cut off in our modern civilization between us and our environment. This is the key to make bigger changes much bigger than clean up a, a little piece of lagoon. The Marginet Research Project that co-organized this cleanup believes that plastic waste should be treated as a useful raw material. The bags of litter that we're bringing back from Murano don't have to end up in an incinerator or landfill. We're assured that we'll see how they can be recycled. This plastic already exists, so you have to collect it, to remove it, and to try to recycle it. That's what we are doing with Marginet project, so that we try to really close the cycle and, of course, to involve the people and raise awareness. Over a single cleanup day in Venice, this association's collected almost three tons of waste, including hundreds of kilos of plastic. These are shipped to Sintol, a small company near Turin that specializes in pyrolysis. Their prototype device breaks down plastic by heating it to 400 degrees in the absence of oxygen. Pyrolysis is the only known way today to process mixed waste without the need for pre-treatment. As you've seen, the litter is simply loaded in just as it was recovered from the sea. Plastics melt down into crude pyrolysis oil and can then be refined into fuel. So the fishing industry, for example, could recycle their old nets and plastics collected at sea into something usable. This is the final product we get from refining crude pyrolysis oil. In this case, we have a light fuel suitable for fast engines, which can be used directly in boats. There's hope that by working together, researchers, activists and the general public can counter one of the fastest growing threats to the world's oceans. If we fail to stop the surge of marine litter, the oceans in three decades' time could contain more plastics by weight than fish.